All right, Gooch, here is your serve from four years ago versus Roddick, and today versus Peter Atz. Um, as you can see, they're very, very similar. Possibly you get a little bit higher off the ground before your Achilles surgery on the left serve, um, but you know, it's a great serve and, and you've kept it relatively the same. Is there any key points that you try to get to in your serve? Is it something that's now natural for you? You don't really have to think about it. And how often do you look? Have, have you looked at it over the last four years? And are you surprised it's the same? So, um, for me now, it's pretty natural. I've got a few key points that I think of to if I'm having a bad day serving to to get me uh, a bit of rhythm going. But um, you know, even back then, I was 23 years old, so I was pretty set in my ways with my service technique and and what I wanted to do with it. But um, yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm glad to see that it hasn't changed much because my serve is my biggest weapon. Yeah, it's something I wouldn't mess with very much either. It's obviously very hard to, uh, to get back into the court. Um, if we, When you were growing up, were there certain players, I've got a clip of you and, and Pat Cash here, were there certain players that you, you know, modelled your game on or is it, you know, you, you're, you're a big guy, obviously, did you think, oh, I'm a big guy, I'll be a serve volleyer? Or were the Australians that came before you some influence um, for you? Yeah, I mean, I enjoyed watching Sampras and Rafter when I was growing up. Um, obviously, I'm a left-hander, so I couldn't I couldn't uh, model my technique on them. But I wanted to play aggressive and attacking game style. Um, I mean, it suited my body type better because I'm I am a bigger guy, so I'm not going to be out there all day grinding with uh, with the other guys. So um, yeah, probably those two guys, I'd say. And uh, here's one of Pete Sampras. I don't know if you've watched him much. A little bit different in that he, when he serves, he lands and then he takes one step and then he splits. So he splits a little bit earlier than most of the players on tour. Is that anything that you've messed with in your game? You, you, you generally seem to take two steps, split in a little bit closer than he does and go forward from there. Yeah. I mean, I think uh, you want to try to split a little closer than that. Um I haven't thought a lot about that, but I mean the idea is to to get in as quick as you can and split in time so you can move either way as they're hitting the return. Yeah, yeah. I mean I've watched a lot of him, and he seems like he splits a bit further back and then tries to get two steps after the split so that he's going forward through the volley, which I'm sure you do as well. And, and uh, maybe he likes to yeah. rely on, on, on good volleying yeah. a little bit. All right. You shank serves. <laughs> Okay, here we go. Gucci only serve analysis. Um, Gucci got a very good serve. On tour, you uh, what you held 90% of the time once, one year. Um, yeah. What is your general philosophy? Say to start a match, you know, you've got a guy returning from a regular position, you know, three, four feet behind the baseline. What do you want to show him early on? Or do you Obviously. keep some tricks, or do you, do you show him all your different balls early? No, you want to keep them guessing. I mean, generally guys, after about a set or so, will start to pick up your serve a little easier. So you might save a couple of serves, but um, you want to hit all the serves to keep them guessing. If you keep going to the same spot, obviously they, they're going to get onto it. But um, yeah, I mean, a serve that's underused a lot is probably the body serve into the body forehand. Um, not a lot of guys are ready for that when they're either looking forehand or backhand, so jamming them up is always a good option. Yeah, I would say being a lefty, I always had trouble with lefties swung it into my body. Yeah. When I'm playing against a lefty, I find it you know, easier to get it into their their left yeah. hip. So yeah, I'm yeah guessing. exactly. That's the advantage of being a lefty. I've got the swinger into the forehand body, which helps yeah. a lot. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you know, when you see different guys returning, say some a guy's, you know, see he's got a big serve, he goes way back. He's like near the back fence. And what's, you probably don't want to go body then, I would guess. What, what sort of things would you throw him? Yeah, if, if, if the opponent's standing quite a ways back, then you kind of use ang angles a little bit more. You might try to hit the short one wide, or even for me on the juice court, instead of going flat up the tee, you slice it so it just keeps moving away from them. The further back they are, obviously, the greater distance they have to cover. Um, and would you like serve volley normally after one of those? Yeah, it also helps serve volley. I mean, they get more time to return, but you can get some closer to the net, net and then... With them being so far back, it opens up any kind of short volley within the service boxes will be almost a winner, and 
-hmm. If they don't get the return right, then you can obviously stick it and put it away. Mm -hmm. And when they move up to the baseline? When they move up, uh, they can obviously cover the angles much better, but um, I mean, it takes much better hands for, for guys to return on the baseline. Um, if, the, if the opponent's standing on the baseline, then I serve a lot of body serves. Uh, first serve I'll vary quite a bit, but second serves a lot into the body. Yeah. If they're covering the angles on second serve, then uh, the, the best serve is to jam up on the forehand so they've got no room to swing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And um, what was I going to say? Because I had a good question. You threw me a curve. Uh, when you're uh, hitting a second serve, do you find guys normally stand in the one position or do they move around a lot and how does that affect your serve? The guys jumping around, does it put you off at all? You guys do different things. Some, some players will stand in the same position and I can kind of hit my spots and uh, I get the same look every time. But so they're letting the you serve where you want to serve yeah. by standing in the same um, spot? You do get a few guys that will jump around and stand back and stand to one side but most of the time they'll move back to their original uh, position. Their position. So they can cover my serve, so I just kind of I try to ignore it and then yep. um, yeah, just serve what I was normally going to serve anyway. Okay. Um, I'm not sure whether to ask you your favourite serve on big points, or I guess different on different surfaces and against different yeah, opponents. Exactly. You'll learn how you're feeling on the day. You'll, um, you, you'll, yeah, you'll throw them some different play. things. You guys are the dodgy forehand or dodgy backhand. Mm -hmm. On big points, you're going to go to his weakness. Yeah. Yeah. All right, Cooch. Part two. Serve, serve and volley. Uh, when you're aiming to serve, do you pick a spot on the court? Do you pick a spot on the back fence? Do you pick a spot on the player down there, or a variation of all three? I kind of a couple of them. I mean, I look at a spot on the court where I want to hit. Um, you have to look at where your opponent's standing as well. Um, yeah, then. Majority of the time you'll look at the court and try to hit a spot, but also I sometimes aim for a spot in the back fence just to, to help get the, the shape a little bit. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you hear that a lot with the AFL footy players, pick someone out in the, in the crowd so you kick yeah. through the goal, yeah. hit through the ball. I guess you're trying to get height on the fence too with your different yeah, serves. Whatever works. I mean, you like mm -hmm. picking a spot in the court and it's not working, but aiming at a small spot in the fence, you're mm -hmm. hitting your spots better, so it's good to, to vary it if it's not working to start. And if your opponent down the other end starts moving around, which I'm sure they should do against you, change the position, force you to serve different spots, will you go start serving where they want you to serve, or will you expect them to move back to that to natural neutral position? Um, I won't change anything to start. I'll just hit my hit my spots and um, see what they do, mm -hmm. and then I'll kind of gauge whether they're moving back to the middle or staying to the one side. And obviously, if they're staying to the one side go to the open court, but if they're coming back to the middle then I mean, just serve normal and, and try not to let them put you off. Yeah. And down your own end, will you ever vary your position, your stance? Will you go yeah, left and bit, right? Not that often, but um, if they're onto my serve a little bit, then just changing some angles and mm. creating a little bit more space so they can get it out wide or middle a little bit better, it helps sometimes. Okay. Um, the game we play today, you know, we don't see a lot of serve volley like we did back in the 80s uh, and before. You know, you still have a great serve volley game. I mean, we compared you with, with Cash and Sam for a very similar movement, split, cutting, moving to a position, depending on where you've hit the volley. What's a common error you see with today's guys when they come in? Because a lot often we see them sort of frozen at the net and, and the pass. Is that all the equipment or is it Just a bit of a lost art? Or the actual volley? Uh, with the, okay, both. You know, do they volley to the wrong spot? I mean, and with, with the volley, a lot of guys panic and try to do too much. Um, try and win it with the first one. Yeah, I mean, if you're coming in and you get a ball, a low volley, you try to hit it to a spot mm -hmm. where you have an educated guess of, of where the pass is going to go. Yeah. Um, and I think guys who don't serve volley that often don't plan that far ahead. Often I'm going to serve volley a point. I think I'm going to serve here. Percentages, he's going to return cross or up the line, whichever serve I hit. I'm going to volley it there and most likely he's going to go here. So you have to plan ahead and then you kind of anticipate they're going to do that but also at the same time you have to cover the other way just in case they, they hit a different shot. I mean on the future too I see a lot of both of these where a guy will come in and he'll stay around the service line and 
he's not a competent volleyer and he's giving ends up having to hit a really tough volley mm -hmm. the, the dipper down at the feet I'll generally, generally go for a drop shot and then we'll also see if he does kick coming in he's a bit of a statue there and he freezes yeah. and, and gets passed on the cross court you know when someone is coming in against you and you know, they want to take the net away from you so they come to the net uh, is there a favorite passing shot you have um Depends a little bit on surface as well. On a mm -hmm. faster court, I try to hit cross court a little bit just in case you catch it a little bit late. Yeah. But on clay, you're obviously a little bit more time and um, you can pick your spots a little bit. But generally, if the uh, if you have an easy easier pass, you go up the line because it's the shortest distance and gives them the least amount of time to hit it. Um, when you're playing, I'm sure you know there's a little bit of gamesmanship going on with your opponents. How do you handle it if someone tries to get under your skin? Maybe they throw out the "he's just got a big serve" comment. Um, does that do that used to worry you when you were younger? Does it you know is it water uh, off a duck's back now? No, it doesn't bother me. I mm. mean, if they want to get angry, that's that's up to them. But I try to just try to stay focused on my own game and and not let that bother me because if mm. it does put me off, then they win. Yeah. They win on that in the mental games and maybe the match as well. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, is there anything your opponent does down the other end that, that does bother you, you know, tactically, like with them, with them movement? You know, we talked in the first video, I'm just not sure which bit got wiped out. Um, you know, when they, if they move up, try yeah. and take it earlier, get it back on you really quickly. If they move back, I know, you know, you... Um, yeah, I mean, some guys obviously stand in different positions when they're returning. Um, it's easier for me when guys are standing really deep in the court, because if I hit my corners, they're going to be at full stretch and then I've got the whole court to get the volley into. But mm -hmm. on the other hand, if they stand up in the baseline, they're going to have to have exceptional hands to, to be able to make a play tough volley. And not many guys can do that. Yep. And, you know, you're going to Wimbledon now. You've got the wild card playing with Leighton. Um, US Open doubles champion a long time ago. But, yeah. And Wimbledon singles champion 10 years ago. Uh, what do you enjoy about playing with Leighton? You know, you guys have different styles. He's, Great returner, you're a great server. Yeah. Um, um, both volley pretty well. You know, I think we complement each other well. I mean, he's fiery and he gets me fired up on the court, which which helps my game. Uh, mm -hmm. And you know, I, I, I can obviously hold my serve and try to help him out when he's serving. Um, so we t we can take care of our service games quite well. Um, and then from the other end of the court, I mean, I you know, I try my best to, to get the returns low and bring him into play. But when he's returning. 89% of the time it's on the server's toes and that brings me into play at the net where I can close and, and look to intercept that first volley. Mm -hmm. um, we'll keep this secret till after you win the championship, but uh, what, do you have any favourite plays you and Leighton that you'll, uh, um, you'll serve to a position he'll cover or if... Uh, uh, on my serves we, uh, we play pretty traditional. On his serves sometimes we'll play in a few crosses. Um, yeah. But the best play that works for us is obviously when Leighton's returning. He's, I mean, he's yeah. a great returner. He's one of the best. And you've and got the wingspan. Guys just aren't used to that. And mm -hmm. I'm closing in and I cover my line and yeah. most of the most of the cross court as well. It's, mm -hmm. it's pretty beneficial. Mm -hmm. I mean, you've you've beaten some top pairs. And Nadal, he's taken down the Fed. A bit of trouble with the Bryans. I'm sure they're a pair you're worried about drawing. Uh, are there other pairs in the draw that you know, you'd rather avoid until? Later in the tournament. Yeah, I mean, obviously the top, the top few doubles teams are um, dominating right now. The Moons mm -hmm. and the Nesters and the Bryans. Um, they're obviously going to be tough, but they're not not unbeatable. I mean, I've had match points against the Bryans, match points against Moon and Nesters, so can't beat the guys. It's just uh, winning the right points at the right time. Yeah. Yeah. Good. All right. Well, good luck out there. Thank you. We'll be following. Cheers. Thanks.